let us begin the first topic of today's class which is continuity of a function so whenever you hear the term continuous what comes to your mind continuous means something without a break or without any pause or without any interruption now mathematically let us understand the meaning of continuous function let us see this diagram we have the x axis the y axis which are intersecting at the origin now we can draw a curve or a function fx without any break or without any pause or without lifting our pen then we say that the function fx is a continuous function so in a continuous function there must not be any break or any pause without lifting the pen we can draw the graph and there can be sharp corners so this is the graphical definition of continuity of a function mathematically how to define a continuous function a function fx is continuous at a point c if limit of the function fx as x goes to c is equal to the value of the function at c that means is equal to fc this definition is for continuity of a function at one particular point a function fx is said to be a continuous function if it is continuous at every point in its domain let us now see the algebra of continuous functions let f and g be two real functions continuous at a real number c their codomain are real numbers then f plus g that means sum of two continuous functions is always a continuous function so f plus g is continuous at x equal to c similarly the difference of two continuous functions is also always a continuous function so f minus g is continuous at x equal to c next product of two continuous functions that means f into g that is also continuous at x equal to c next we have division of two continuous functions that means f divided by g is also continuous at x equal to c provided the denominator is not equal to 0 that means the function g at the point c must not be equal to 0 otherwise our function will not be defined next we have composition of two continuous functions that means f of g and g of f they are also continuous at x equal to c so these are all the algebra of continuous functions now let us study some numericals check the continuity of the function fx is equal to 2x plus 3 at x equal to 1 so you have to recall the definition of continuous functions because we cannot always draw the graph of a function but mathematically we can always write down the definition of continuous functions and then we can solve it So here when you recall the mathematical definition of continuous functions it is limit of the function at a particular point is equal to value of the function at that particular point so let us begin our solution we have limit of fx as x goes to 1 because in the question it is mentioned when x is equal to 1 that will be equal to limit of as x goes to 1 we have our function fx as 2x plus 3 because that is given in the question fx equal to 2x plus 3 so now in this next step we are going to apply our knowledge of limits that means we have to see whether our function is defined or not once we put the limiting value so here if we put x equal to 1 we can see that 2 into 1 plus 3 that is defined so after applying limits our answer will be 2 into 1 plus 3 so our answer is going to be 5 now we have got the value of limit when x goes to 1 or x tends to 1 now we have to find the value of the function at x equal to 1 that means we have to find f of 1 what is fx fx is 2x plus 3 so what will be f1 f1 will be 2 into 1 plus 3 and the answer is 5 so we see that 
the limit value and the value of the function they are same. Therefore, the function fx is continuous at the point x equal to 1. Let us study another example. Show that the function fx is equal to x cube plus 3 when x is not equal to 0 and fx equal to 1 when x is equal to 0. We have to show that this function is not continuous at x equal to 0. So, if we see the question carefully, our function is defined in two ways. When x is not equal to 0, our function is something and when x is equal to 0, our function is taking another value. So, whenever our function is defined in this manner, we have to find the left hand limit and the right hand limit. And if they are equal, the limit exists. And if they are not equal, the limit does not exist. And if the limit exists, then that value of limit must be equal to the value of the function. Then we say that our function is continuous at a particular point. So in this question, we have to check whether our function is continuous at x equal to 0 or not. So we have to find our left hand limit and our right hand limit. So for finding the left hand and the right hand limits, we will break our function again into two more parts. Because in our question, they have mentioned that when x is not equal to 0, our function is x cube plus 3. x not equal to 0. What does it mean? Either x is less than 0 or x is greater than 0. So, we will divide our function again into one more part and we will begin our solution in this manner. fx is equal to x cube plus 3 when x is not equal to 0 and fx is equal to 1 when x is equal to 0. So, we will have to divide our function again and write down as fx is equal to x cube plus 3 when x is less than 0 and again x cube plus 3 when x is greater than 0. Also, fx is equal to 1 when x is equal to 0. So, we have to write down the step because we have to calculate our left hand limit. That means when x is less than 0 and also we have to calculate our right hand limit. That means when x goes to a number greater than 0. So, let us calculate our left hand limit. So, left hand limit definition is limit x goes to 0 minus because left hand side values are always less than 0. So, x goes to 0 minus and we have to write down fx. So, in the next step, when x goes to 0 minus, that means when x is less than 0, what is our function fx? From our definition, we can see that our function is x cube plus 3. So, our next step becomes limit of x cube plus 3 as x goes to 0. The work of our 0 minus that work of the minus sign is over. So, we can simply write as x goes to 0. That minus sign was only for choosing our function fx. Once it is chosen, we don't have to give the minus sign again. So, our next step becomes in place of x, we will put 0 and the limit becomes 0 cube plus 3. And then our answer will come out to be 3. Now let us find the right hand limit. So RHL that means right hand limit is equal to limit fx when x goes to 0 plus. Why 0 plus? Because we are going towards 0 from the right hand side. So our x is always greater than 0. So we have written x goes to 0 plus. In the next step, we have to choose what is our function fx when the values of x are greater than 0 because 0 plus means numbers which are greater than 0. So, we will have limit of x cube plus 3 when x goes to 0. Why? Because we are moving towards 0 from the right hand side. So, our function becomes x cube plus 3 from the definition of fx. So, our next step will now become 0 cube plus 3 after putting the value of x as 0. And then our answer will come out to be 3. So, we have our left hand limit as 3 and our right hand limit also as 3. Therefore, left hand limit is equal to right hand limit. So, limit exists and limit of fx as x goes to 0, the answer is 3. Now, we have to find the value of the function when x equal to 0. That means we have to find f of 0. So, when x equal to 0, what is the function fx? fx is 1. That means f of 0 will be equal to 1. Now, is your limit value 
and the value of the function same? No, that means our function fx is not continuous at x equal to 0. Let us see another example. Discuss the continuity of the function fx is equal to 1 by x when x is not equal to 0. So here in this question they have not mentioned at which point you have to check the continuity of the function fx. They have not mentioned that point. So we will just take a random point c. What is c? c is anything but 0. So let us begin our solution. Limit of fx as x goes to c. That c point we have taken on our own because it is not mentioned in the question. So c is any point except 0. So our next step will become limit of as x goes to c. What will be our function fx? fx is already given in the question. It is 1 by x. So in the next step, instead of x, we will put c and we will get the answer as 1 by c. So this is our value of the limit. Next, we will find the value of the function. That means f of c we have to calculate. So for finding f of c, you have to know what is fx? fx is nothing but 1 by x. So what will be fc? fc will be 1 by c. Therefore, we see that limit of fx when x goes to c or when x tends to c, that is equal to f of c. So our value of limit is equal to value of the function. Therefore, f is continuous at every point in its domain because c was a random point. That means f is a continuous function. Let us study one more example. Find all points of discontinuity of fx is equal to modulus x divided by x when x is not equal to 0. And when x is equal to 0, fx is equal to 0. So our function is defined in two ways. When x is not equal to 0, the function is something. And when x is equal to 0, the function is something else. So in these type of questions, you have to find the left hand limit as well as the right hand limit because the function is defined in more than one way. Now, they have not mentioned any point in the question. At which point you have to check the continuity? They have not mentioned. So we will have to just take a random point on our own. First, we will observe our function fx and we will see what is the condition on x that is given in the side. It is given that when x is not equal to 0, our function is modulus x by x and when x is equal to 0, our function is 0. So first of all, we have to recall our definition of modulus x. What is modulus x? Modulus x is either plus x or minus x. It is plus x when x is greater than or equal to 0 and it is minus x when x is less than 0. So we have to recall this definition. Let us start our solution fx is equal to modulus x divided by x when x is not equal to 0 and fx is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0. So this is given in the question. In the next step, we are going to further break our function fx. When x is less than 0, what is our function? When x is greater than 0, what is our function? And when x is equal to 0, what is our function? So we will further break our function fx. So when x is less than 0, our function will be same modulus x by x. And when x is greater than 0, then also our function will be same modulus x by x. Because in the previous step, they have said when x is not equal to 0, our function is modulus x by x. That means when x is greater than 0, function is same. And when x is less than 0, then also the function is same, which is modulus x by x. And when x is equal to 0, our function is 0. So we have broken our function fx in these three ways. Now in the next step, we are going to apply our definition of modulus x, which is when x is less than 0, modulus x equal to minus x. And when x is greater than 0, modulus x is equal to plus x. So that we are going to put in our next step and we will have fx is equal to minus x by x when x is less than 0, plus x by x when x is greater than 0, and 0 when x is equal to 0. So this is our function fx. In the next step, we are going to further simplify and some numerators and denominators will be cancelled and the simplified form of fx will be minus 1 
when x is less than 0, 1 when x is greater than 0 and 0 when x is equal to 0. So this is our function fx. Now this point x equal to 0 that means the point at which our left hand side function is given and our right hand side function is also given that point has a name we have discussed in our earlier classes too. That point x equal to 0 is called a critical point or a danger point. That means in this particular point x is equal to 0, our limit may or may not exist and also our function may or may not be continuous. In our question they have asked us about find all points of discontinuity. That means if there is any point of discontinuity that point can only be 0. Other than 0 you will never have any point of discontinuity because 0 is the only critical point or danger point. So our main aim is to check whether our function fx is continuous or not at the point x equal to 0. We will not check at any other points because other points are not our critical points or danger points. So let us check whether our function fx is continuous at x equal to 0 or not. First we have to find the left hand limit. So LHL or left hand limit is equal to limit of fx as x goes to 0 minus because 0 is the critical point and we are moving towards 0 from the left side. So we have x goes to 0 minus. Our next step will become limit. Now what is the function when x goes to 0 from the left hand side? That means when x is less than 0. What is your function fx? fx is nothing but minus 1. So we will have limit of minus 1 as x goes to 0. We will not write any more as x goes to 0 minus because the work of the minus sign is over. That was only to choose our function fx. So we will simply write as x goes to 0 now. And our answer is minus 1. Now we will find the right hand limit. That means RHL which will be equal to limit of fx as x goes to 0 plus. Why 0 plus? Because we are going towards 0 from the right side. So all our values of x are greater than 0. So we have x goes to 0 plus. Now as we are going towards x from the right hand side that means as x is greater than 0 what will be our function fx? If you see the definition of fx that is 1. So we will have limit of 1 as x goes to 0 in the next step. We will not write x goes to 0 plus anymore because the work of the plus sign is over. That is only to choose our function fx. So we have limit of 1 as x goes to 0 and our answer is 1. As we can see our left hand limit and right hand limit are not same. Since left hand limit is not equal to right hand limit, therefore the limit of fx as x goes to 0 does not exist. So if limit only does not exist, then how can you check whether your function fx is continuous or not? So therefore fx is not continuous at x equal to 0 because limit only does not exist.